If you are still living under the flesh, you still allow the flesh to take over your life. You are not a sanctified believer. What God wants for you is for you to be a sanctified believer. If you are always prompt to answer, you are always prompt to react, you are always prompt to, 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 to do something, you don't allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. You don't allow your whole, the Holy Spirit to teach the speech coming out from your mouth. What you have to say, you, you don't allow the Spirit of God to choose your reaction. My dear, you are still under the influence of the flesh. Last time I thought you were saying, you must kill the flesh before they feel the flesh kill, kill you. Because in Romans chapter 8 verse 13, the Bible says, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, of the body, you shall live. My sister, mm -hmm. your flesh, your flesh must die. Because what your flesh, the direction the flesh wants you to do, take is against the direction of God. The Bible is saying that if you live after the flesh, you will die. You will be condemned. Even though you claim to be a child of God, but you still live under the flesh, you will die. You will not see Jesus. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to mortify the deed of your flesh, hallelujah, to kill, to crucify your flesh, then you are going to see God. You are going to live. You are going to live. Don't allow the spirit of the, the flesh to take over your life. Everybody know who you were before. How you used to react. How you used to dishonor people. How you used to insult people. How you used to disrespect people. How you used to disgrace people. How you used to curse everyone. But now people know that you are claiming to be a child of God. Everybody know in the city that you, you, you are sharing tracks every day. Everybody know that you are calling yourself a child of God. Now let them see that you are a new man. You are a new man. Many people disgrace. They, 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 they call themselves ambassador of Jesus. But what they are doing, they are, they are, they are disgracing the name of Jesus. Yes. By your action. Your action must show people that truly you are a new creature in Christ. You are a new man. The flesh has to be put to death. Now that the spirit of God dwells in you. When somebody offends you this time, with the fear of God that you have in you, my sister, you will not rush an answer. You will not rush. You will not be prompt. You will first allow the Holy Spirit to control your reactions. The Holy Spirit to control just your, your, your actions, your speech. A child of God is somebody who controls his movement. Your movement are controlled. Don't be quick to speak. Why? Because the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 19, that in the book of James chapter 1 verse 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rot. Yes, this is the word of God. Every man, including you, you that call yourself a child of God, that person who used to come to attack you and two of you will, will, will go on the street, begin to fight, fighting each other. You understand? You enjoy fighting. You enjoy, you, 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 you enjoy fighting that person. But today, today, because you are now born again, because you carry the name of a daughter of the Most High God, a virtuous woman, give not room to the devil. Give not room to the devil. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25, 27, it says, neither give place to the enemy. Neither give place to the devil. Let me give you a testimony of a woman. Probably you have heard that testimony. This woman, she was a sanctified believer. But there is a character in her life that she did not allow the Holy Spirit to kill it. She did not allow the Holy Spirit to control her anger. The anger was hiding somewhere. That is why I always tell people to pray this prayer. Any hiding, hidden sin in my heart that is waiting for the open day to manifest himself. Oh my God. Now, destroy it. You will never know that you have the spirit of pride in you until, uh, 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 until the time comes. Every 
child of God must show when is this when you pass through a, a trials, temptation, then you use the opportunity to produce all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So before the times of test come, the test of purity, you must make sure that inside you, in your heart, there is no hidden sin. There is no hidden character. There is no character of the flesh in you. This sister thought that she has, you understand, she was still having anger, hiding in her. Not knowing that Satan was waiting for the last opportunity, the only opportunity to destroy her life. To destroy her forever. There is a woman who was staying in her house. This woman today on YouTube, she's confessing, please forgive me of what I've done. She's not a believer. But that woman, where is she? What happened? This lady that is now confessing, oh God, forgive me. She said she was staying with that woman, that believer. She, she was sent to kill her. She was sent to destroy that woman. You that doesn't know who, who is around you. Maybe it's a devil, it's a satanic agent that has been sent from hell to come and destroy you. You don't know. That person is just waiting for a, a second. The person is waiting for the opportunity to destroy you. This woman was staying, waiting for the time to kill that sister. She could not find any door open until one day this woman had argument with her husband and then she got angry she got seriously angry and she went to bed without reconciling with god without reconciling with her husband he was in the middle of the 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 the, 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 the where she was sleeping that that woman changed into animal the rat to go and bite her and to and kill her what a waste after serving God for so many years. And the last minute you lo lose your eternity. My sister, don't allow the flesh, of the flesh to kill you. Make sure that every deed of the flesh in your life is dead. Because that thing that you neglect can cost you eternity. Now the sister that did this thing, the sister has repent. But she that was calling herself a child of God is gone. Is gone. I don't think in her sleep she repent because she slept with that confessing and they killed her. What a waste. What a waste of life. Don't be a signboard. Don't be 50% believer. Be a sanctified believer. You have been following God all this time. You have been allowing the spirit of God to take over you all this time. But just because a tiny situation, you allow the flesh to take over. You open the door to the flesh again. They are sin. That sin was hiding. That pride was hiding. That jealousy was hiding somewhere. That hatred was hiding somewhere. You do not go in God, on God in prayer. Oh God, destroy this thing in my life. So that when the time of test of purity will come, oh God, I will produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. What you hear today is for you to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When time comes, every child of God must uh, every child of God must pass through the test of purity. They must test your life, your Christianity. If what you are hearing, you are practicing it, there will come a time when the flesh wants to take over. Now you are you are the one now battling between the flesh and the spirit of God. Who are you going to allow to take over? You as a sanctified believer, never allow the flesh to take over. The Bible said that if you live under the flesh, you will die. This is a warning. You will not see God. Those that live after the flesh, a carnal mind, they will, a carnal mind will never please God. No. If you don't kill the work of the flesh today, the deed of the flesh today, tomorrow, my sister, it will be too late. When temptation will come, you will fall. And you always go say, oh God, I always fall. Oh God, I will always fall. No. You must, you must make sure that you, you crucify that deed of the flesh in your life. When a serious storm will come, that character will not show up. That character is already killed. That evil character. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, the book of Galatians chapter 5, 
Verse 24. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody open it. Okay. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. The Bible, the Bible is here yeah, with me. And they that are in Christ. They that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with their affection and they lost. You that are in Christ, if you want to be identified as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus, you have all make sure that the flesh in your life is dead. You have crucified it. You have crucified the loss of the flesh. You have crucified the deed of your flesh. Make sure you crucify the deed of your flesh. You kill that flesh before it kill you. Stop allowing him to make decisions for you. Stop allowing him to answer in your place. Stop allowing him to take decisions for you. Stop allowing him to decide for you. Now that you are, you are, you are no more a Nicodemus, you are now a born again, the presence of God dwell in you, the spirit of God dwell in you, don't allow the flesh to direct you. Never. Never. Don't allow the flesh to, to direct you. Allow that spirit of God that is in you to take over your life. Last time we said that to be a sanctified believer, you must have the presence of God. And we learned that a sanctified believer is born again from the spirit and of the water. From the spirit and of the water. The two of them goes together. The spirit of God that is there to discipline you and the water that is the word of God that is there to teach you the, the ways of God. Hallelujah. You need the word of God. You need to soak your, yourself, your spirit with the word of God. If you don't read the word of God, your spirit is weak. If you don't read the word of God, you are on incomplete. You are not 100% a believer. Yes. You make sure that the word of God, according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, the word of God dwell richly, abundantly in your heart, in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Elo, I'm with your mic. The grace of God. Sister Mojupe, meet your mic. Amen. Yes. Now you have understood that without the presence of God, you cannot be a sanctified believer. Because your goal, your, your goal is to be a sanctified believer. Make sure that you are a sanctified believer. Because if you are not sanctified, you are not going to enter the gate of, the gate of heaven. You need the presence of God, the spirit of God. Number two, today we are coming back. For you to be a sanctified believer, a true child of God, after being born again, after receiving the presence of God in your heart, you need to live a life of purity. Your heart, your life must be pure. Everything concerning you must be pure. Everything concerning you must be pure. Let's open in Psalm chapter 24, verse 3 to 4. The book of Psalm, the book of Psalm, Chapter 24, verse 3 to 4. I read in the name of Jesus. Anybody can read it? Yeah? Go on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 24, verse 3. Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Who shall ascend in the name of the Lord? Or who shall stand in this holy place? Hmm. He that three hands hey. and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, no swan deceitfully. Hey! Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? You that is waiting for the coming of the Messiah. You said that day I will be rapture. I will be rapture. Who? Let me tell you who will be rapture. The person that will be rapture. The person that will stand in the holy place before the presence of God is he that had clean hands. He that had a pure heart. Who are not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn this, nor sworn deceitfulness. You that say that God only look at the heart, but your hand are, are not pure, your hand are not clean. Let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to take only sanctified believers. 
is coming to take those that are kept their heart pure, those that are kept their hands clean, clean from iniquity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say God does not look at your heart. God only look at your heart, but your hands are involved into sin, corruption, corruption, any kind of sin. The day of rapture, you will not ascend. You will not ascend. When people will begin to ascend to heaven, you will not ascend. My sister, is that what you want? My brother, is that what you want for your life? In your everyday attitude, always remember heaven is watching you. There is a recording somewhere. There is a record somewhere. They are recording it somewhere. Therefore, keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Your duty is to make sure that you are pure. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed for the, for, are the pure in heart for they shall see God. That is the word of God. All you are learning from God, from his word, from his spirit, you must make sure that you obey it. You live by it. It's a commandment. If you love God, obey his commandment. God said, if you love me, my daughter, obey my word. Obey God. The way you are worshipping God must be with a pure heart. A pure heart. Many people don't fear God. That's why you must pray every day. God, increase the fear in me. Increase the fear of God in my life. Because some people in the presence of God, they don't respect the presence of God. That is the time they will take their phone, begin to surf on the phone. They will go, to, let me check uh, my Facebook. Let me check uh, my, my, my Google Hangouts. Let me check my this thing. In, the, in front of God, in the presence of God, even here on Google Meeting, some people are here. Thank God that I ask people to mute the mic. If I allow you to own that mic today, I will hear all kind of noise. I will hear plates going from here, bah, like this. You'll be talking music, you know? Why are you here then? Go and sleep. You are you say you are coming in the presence of, uh, presence of God, but you are talking with your friend, chatting on the phone. You don't fear God. You don't fear God. What is that pure heart? You don't even want, you don't even bother to know that you are in the presence of God. People are listening to the word of the word of God, and you are there, you open your mic, you make noise anyhow. You are talking, you are chatting on your phone, laughing. Some people are talking about something else. If, you are, if I open this phone today, you will hear something else. They are talking about something else different from what you are doing. They don't, they are just there for formality. Don't be a formal Christian. Be a sanctified believer. Don't do this because the virtual woman said we should pray 15 minutes, uh, 2 hours, 14 hours a day. You just do it. When you are doing you are doing it fast. My father, my Lord, my God, my father, my father, my father, my father. If I tell you what, what are you saying? You will not know. You will not know what you are saying. Your heart is not there. Where is your heart? Because the fish is only comfortable when it's inside the water. You, where are you comfortable? When it's time to come to pray, your, your face looks sad. You begin to scratch your head. Why? You are thinking, let them do quick. Oh, every time. They will be spending more time, time, prayer, prayer, prayer. Let me do quick. Let me do quick. Even that one hour is a problem for you. Why are you playing with your life, my sister? Why are you playing your, with your life? You say you want to serve God. You are not serving God. 100%. You don't really know that you are in the presence of God. You don't respect the presence of God. You don't, you don't follow the, the, the ways of God. Don't play the game. Don't play that game. Many people are playing that game and they are trying to today in Hellfire. They have been playing the game of 50 50, 50 percent, 60 percent, 90 percent, 99 percent. If you are wise, be 100 percent. Your holiness be, must, must, be, must be 100 percent or nothing. If that thing is so important, more than God, it's better you stay on that side. But if you want to be with God, come on the side of God. Make sure that. You follow God 100% with all your heart. A sanctified believer. A sanctified believer will never allow anything to come between him and God. He will not allow the flesh to take over between him and God. To come between him and, um, uh, uh, and God. He will not allow anything to come between heaven and him. Because your goal is heaven. And you know, for you to enter the kingdom of God, you must be holy. 
holy in and out, without and within. You must be pure and your hands must be clean. This is the book of God. It's, it's the word of God. It, 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 it said, who shall ascend in the heel of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands. Clean hands. Many people in the house of God, they say they are going to heaven, but they are thief. Thief in the house of God. Thief. They will steal the money of God. You are a treasurer. A treasurer. You take the money. You don't let the, 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 the man of God know. You don't let the pastor know. You take the money you eat. You don't pay your tithe. You are thief. Many Christians, they are thief. In the house of God, you don't have a clean hand. No, no, no. Your hands. Your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of iniquity. You must have a pure hand. A clean hand. You that steal in your office. You that, you know, you steal in your office. You steal the money. You steal this. You steal pen. You steal this. You steal this. You don't let your boss to know. Your hands are not clean. For you to ascend to the throne of the mighty God, your hands must be clean. You that steal in your house, your parents' house. It's not because it's your mother that you take the money from her wallet. Without asking her, you must restitute. You must restitute that money. Yes. The money of your husband is not your money. It's going to work. Allow him to come and put the money on the table. You say, my darling, my wife, my honey, this is our money. But don't just go and begin to search. Put your hand. Where is that? You, you don't tell him. Even though you use that money to cook for your husband. You have stolen the money from him. He does not know that it's the money you took from his pocket. Maybe he has been looking for, for that money. He thought maybe he threw it somewhere. Not knowing that you are the one. Your hands are not clean. Many people, oh God, bless me, bless me. When you bless me, I will bless, I will bless, I will bless the work of God. When the opportunity to come, you don't you don't even pay your tithe. You don't even you 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 you, you are a thief. You are a thief. You have been in that ministry. You have been sleeping with your pastor. Today you are giving your life to Jesus. Yes. Go and confess that sin. Go and confess that sin. Because the pastor is standing before the altar. Preaching people. And you and him know what you have been doing in the secret. And you say God forgive me. What about the sin? Upon the altar. Have you gone to confess? Go and see the Jew of that man. Go and see the leader of that man. Go and see the man confess. Go and see his wife. Yes, expose the sin. Don't hide anything. Don't hide anything. Allow that your hands are clean. Allow your hands to be clean. Yes, allow it. Don't take anything from anybody without the permission. It's not for you. Hallelujah. Don't take anything from your parents without the permission. Don't take anything from your husband without the permission. Can you stand now and say, God, thank you because my hands are clean. How many people? How many people have you led to do abomination? Uh, you know, abortion. Your hands are not clean. Your hands are not clean. You have been doing trafficking, drug trafficking, corruption, bribes. All these, all these are standing. Your hands are not clean. When you lift up your hand like this, God is seeing iniquity in your hands. He's seeing iniquity in your hands. To be a sanctified believer, your hands must be clean. That's why restitution, my sister, is very important. Don't try to say, oh, it happened when I was still a believer, when I was still 15 years old, when I was still, when sin does not get old. If you sin 50 years ago, that sin is still sin. It does, it's you that is changing. You are aging. You are getting old, but the sin is still fresh. You understand? It's still fresh. You need the blood of Jesus to wipe it away. They are sin against God, sin against humanity. You must go and confess that sin in front of that people. Woman, I've been in this church. I've been going out with your husband. I'm, now I've confessed my sin. The Lord said I should come and tell you the truth. Yes! Tell that man, you, a child, you say you claim, you claim yourself a child of God. You are being in this choir, sleeping with women. Today I know the truth. I must expose that sin. Yes! Don't hide any sin. Don't keep anything secret. Make sure that your hands are pure. Make sure that your hands are not involved in anyone's sin. Yes! You are blameless before God. Many, men, before God. Many Christians, they don't believe in restitution. Someone say, oh, a pastor. Can you imagine? Pastor wife. 
when I was just a believer, I thank God because he speak through dreams to me sometimes. He said, my daughter, in that dream, he said, you are a thief. You stole money from people. Go and give it back. Oh, Jesus, thank you. I thank you because nobody was there to teach me about the situation. But the Lord came and taught me Jesus love us so much. He wants you to be a sanctified believer. That's why he's using my mouth today to speak to you, my sister. The Lord said to me, my daughter, make sure that you, you go and, and restitute. I woke up, I began to cry because my own debt were too much. Then I called this pastor wife. She said, why are you crying? Oh, Claire. Don't rely on that, the dreams. Eh? I am telling you, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. You are a new creature. God has paid your debt. Jesus has paid all your debt. He has forgiven you. Don't bother to pay this debt. What? The woman I saw said, please. She said, I don't want to hear. Whether you are a new creature or you are not a new creature. I know that my money is there. You must pay my money. Pay my money before we talk about your new, your new creature. Pay my money. I need my money. You promise you are going to pay me. And you are there, you are saying that you are, God has made you a, a new creature. When my debt, your, the money you owe me is still hang, hanging there. You see how you are lying yourself? Yes, you see how you are deceiving yourself? Call that woman. Call that man. Because you need to be pure before God. You don't know when death can come. You don't know when capture can occur, come. Always make sure. You don't say, Madam, I don't have money now. Please forgive me. Allow me, give me some time. Yes! God knows that you don't have money. You cannot go and steal it. But you have made peace. Follow peace with all men. Don't say, oh, now nah, I'm a new catcher. All things have passed away. Death are hanging there. Eh? That death will be follow, follow you. Until the, the, the day you appear before the throne of God. That death will turn to a snake like this. I'm telling you, my sister. It is you to make the decision. I told you last time. If you want to be a sanctified the believer, make the decision today. Make the decision not to allow the flesh to control you anymore. Because if you live under the flesh, my sister, you are going to die. You are going to be condemned forever. There is no more condes condemnation for those that in Christ who does not walk after the flesh. There is a condition. If you are in Christ Jesus, but you walk after the flesh, you will be condemned. You will not see God. Your hands must be pure. Don't get involved to anything. Don't get involved to anything that will make you unclean. Don't touch the unclean thing. Don't kill innocent life. Fast reports, report involving in trafficking, corruption, bribing. What will you gain? What will you gain if you have all the whole world and lost your life? Your eternity. Focus on your eternity. Make sure you are a belief, a sanctified believer. Make sure that you are a sanctified believer. You that hate your sister. You that hate your brother. I want you to know that you don't have a pure heart. You that have immorality thought. I want you to know that you don't have pure heart. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. You that hate your brother. You are jealous of your brother, jealous of your sister. You will not see God. You will not see God. If you follow Jesus, then you must believe in his word. You cannot say you follow Sister Claire, but you don't believe in what God has given to me. Yes, believe in Jesus. Follow Jesus in believing him. Believe in, the, in, 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 in Jesus is obeying his word. Follow his steps. Jesus was a man with a pure heart. You too must you must have a pure heart. You have taken somebody's husband. You have gone to marry that man. You knew that the man was already married. You say, oh, they have been. Uh, let me tell you, the wife cheat on him. The wife is a witch. The wife is. What is your problem? Were you there when they were that they were bounding themselves, making making covenant? Before the altar, before the, the, the court, before God, before the family, were you there? Now you have become the judge. Huh? And you have gone to, to judge that woman, destroy the marriage, and become the woman. Restitute that man. Restitute that man to his wife. Restitute that wife to his husband. 
If you want to be a, a sanctified believer, if you want to see God, your heart must be pure. Your hands mu must be clean. Don't get involved in sin. Don't get involved in things that doesn't concern you. Don't go and carry, and, and carry somebody's trouble and put on you. Somebody's sin put on your head. You are still striving to enter the kingdom of God. You will go and take somebody's husband. Your hands are not clean. Your hands. There is no amount of prayer that will make you to be raptured if Jesus come. Unless you let you choose the married, the, 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 the husband of that woman. Go and find your own. Wait for your own. Your husband will come. Wait for your own that God has appointed since the beginning. Before you come, you, you were born. Wait for your own husband. Your own husband will be for you alone. Nobody will look at him. Why are you going to take somebody's husband because they have problem? They have issue. Oh, this one did it. This one did that. This one did that. You are a thief. Adulteress. Fornicator. You go and pick the daughter of somebody without even telling the parent. You put her in your house. Where is the proof that you have married her? Where is the proof? You are a thief. Your hands are not clean. Your hands are not clean. You must honor that woman. You must honor her. Yes. Honor that woman. You that call yourself, you are calling yourself your, her husband. What is the proof that proves that is it's your wife? What's the proof? Your hands are not clean. Your heart is not pure. You are a thief. Go and tell the parents. Not only the parents. Declare in the government. Declare before God a man. Honor that woman before God. Honor that woman before men. Honor that woman before the family. Yes, a sanctified believer. Where are the people, people that, that sanctify that this woman is your wife? Have you spoken to the parents? Have you done what the parents ask you to do? If the parents say, don't pay this, go, we give it to her free. We don't ask such amount of, of money. Take. The parents have given. The family sit down. They clap and they pray for you. They say, go. Now it's your wife. Yes, you must go two steps. Don't go and marry somebody because the person has had problem with his wife. You that call yourself a believer, you will not see God because your heart is not pure. You must restitute that husband to his wife. You, you took a woman. You've used her. You begin to say you will marry her. Promising, promising, promising. You promise the family you will marry her. Now she has six children, three children, one child, two children, three children, four children with you. Now your eyes are open. Then you know that she's no more beautiful. You dump her and you go and marry another woman. If you have not married her, I'm not telling you that go and marry her by force. What you have to do, go and ask forgiveness to the parents, forgiveness to the woman, beg her to forgive you because your hands are not pure. There is no amount if you go and, and preach the word of God for that woman. She will not listen to you. Because your hands, your heart is not pure. What you did for her, for her to her was not good. The children you had with her, make sure you take good care of the children. You the woman that got in some marriage and your husband already have children outside. Then you say, oh, only concentrate on my children. You begin to maltreat, maltreat these children. Your hands are not clean. Your hands are not clean. Your heart is not pure. Don't treat these children as if they are not your children. The children are for God. It's not for you. It's not for you. You are just a biological parent. Every child is our children. Every child. When a child comes inside your family, you are the mother of your, that child. Whether you are the one that gives birth or not, your hands will be clean. You have a decision to make. All the, the promises you have been doing to people, you fail to do it. You need to restitute. Your hands must be clean. Yes, you are working in, a, in an office within somebody else's paper. It is not you inside. It is not your name. My sister, that, the fact that the ID is not yours, the document is not yours, your hands are not pure. Your hands are not clean. Therefore, Restitute. Restitute that certificate to the person, to the owner. If you want to be a sanctified believer, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you that is using a name that is not your name, you use a name that is not your name, 
You go and ask for work. You give another name. You ask for asylum seeker. You ask, uh, uh, give another name. You give another age. You use a name that is not yours. You use an age that is not yours. Your hands are not pure. Your hands are full of iniquity. Your hands are not clean. Therefore, all your praises before God, it is full of iniquity. Yes, you that is using a hair, hair attachment that is not yours. It's not yours. You are showing an image that is not yours. Your heart is not pure. Your hands are not clean. Restitute that hair. Go back to your natural hair. Restitute that hair to the queen of the ghost. Go back to your natural hair. Go back to your natural skin color. You that is using another color to deceive people around you. You deceive your husband. You deceive your children. You deceive your workers. You deceive people that are watching you on the street. You are lying to them even though you don't open your mouth. The fact that they are saying, seeing you, it is not you. My sister, your hands are not clean. Your hands are not clean. Your heart is not pure. Blessed are they pure in heart. Your heart must be pure if you want to see God. Your hands must be clean if you want to ascend to heaven. If you want to appear before the throne of God, my sister, go back to to. To, to, to the natural way. Those people that are using cream to change the color of their skin, they are lying. They have a lying spirit. The lying spirit. In Psalm, Psalm 24, I read again, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall, ascend, who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and, clean, and pure hearts, who had not lifted up his soul into unto vanity, not sworn deceitful. Yes, your soul. You have lifted up your soul into lies. Everything about you is lie. Everything about you from head to toe, from the body to the spirit, to the spirit to the soul, is lie. My sister, you need to be a sanctified believer. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, you have changed the natural part of the of, of natural use of any part. You that change the natural use of any part of your body. Instead to eat by you, your mouth, you eat by the, uh, you see? You know, you are with your husband. God said it must be, it must be this way. You are changing the back. You say no. It's, it, it's to the, it's to the side. To, to this, this side. No. Go back to the way God has instructed it. The, the reason why you are together is to procreate. Multiplicate. Multiply, sorry. How can you produce a child? In the, in the Enos. How can you possess a child there? And you go your husband sleeping there. Practicing the sin of Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. My sister. Today. If you want to enter the kingdom of God. Make sure these things are out of your life. This deed of the flesh. If you don't kill the flesh. The flesh will kill you. You. You are married. And you see your husband is leaving you. Your wife is leaving you. To another man, make sure your hands are clean. You are not the one that pushed that man to leave you. Except is leaving you for Jesus. Your hands are clean. That is just persecution. But if that man is leaving you because you are not respectful, you are not submissive, you are not uh, taking care of the children, you are not taking care of the house, all everything is about you is just negativity. You need to ask God to forgive you. You need to beg that man. If that man go and file for divorce, make everything, make all your possible not to accept that divorce. And I know with the ungodly, the crookedness, the, the wickedness of men, they will still allow the divorce. When even divorce is pronounced, you know that before God, there is no divorce. You know that the woman your husband is gone with outside. Even though they are going to marry, they, they went to marry to the palace. They went to marry to Iceland, to Iceland, to America, to Asia, to India. That marriage does not have any value before God. It is an abomination, you know. Therefore, keep your hands clean. Don't allow people to begin to see, to say, the flesh begin to say, since your husband left you, now you are free. Go and remarry. Because only death. Will tear you apart. That day when you were on the court. Yes. 
Oh, mais Dieu est dead. Tiens, on s'abat. Don't allow, don't break that law. Don't break that vow. Only ungodly people break it. Don't break it. Don't allow the court to separate you from husband. To anybody, any in law, any friend, separate you from your husband, from your wife. Unless your husband decide to go. You have done all your possible. Now you wait patiently and you pray for him. Then the Lord open his eyes. Only if he dies, then you can say yes. Now I can remarry. Your hands must be pure. Your hand must be pure. Be pure in your heart. Your hands must be clean. The thought of your heart. The thought of your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Let's open Acts chapter 15 verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 9. Oh Jesus. Help us. Purify us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord sanctify you, my sister. Yes, sister John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, as man said, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. Purify your heart by faith. God wants you to keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Don't allow any person to come and defy your heart. Don't allow your flesh to come and defy your heart. Don't allow sin to come and defy your heart. You are just there gathering yourself. Yes. Don't allow anything to come and spoil your relationship with God. Let's open 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Oh, Jesus. My Father, Lord, sanctify us. In the name of Jesus, yes? 1 Timothy chapter 5. 21 and 22 said, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sin. Keep thyself pure. Neither be partaker of other men's sin. Keep thyself pure. A sanctified believer, don't be partaker of anybody's sin. Keep yourself pure. Make sure you keep yourself pure. Protect yourself. Love, love your soul. Love your soul. Protect yourself. That is divine wisdom. The wisdom of the five virgin that made it. Yes! Only fools. Only fools will drop, will, will, will go prompt into conversation. You don't even know whether they are gossiping. You just go, yes, 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 it's me. Uh -huh, yes, I was there. You are not keeping yourself pure. Keep yourself diligently. Watch over your soul. Always ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, do the x-ray of your life every minute. Yes. You know that that sister is a gossiper. You know that sister, each time she will call you is to join, to, 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 my sister, don't be partaker of the sin of that woman. If she doesn't want to change, she has made the decision that flesh we would we keep send her to her fire. Don't go and carry that the, 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 the sin of that woman. You are not yet you are you are not yet finished. You kill all the deeds of the flesh of, of your heart, and you are still going to partake to somebody's sin. When you are striving to enter, you are you are putting more yokes on you. Don't be partaker of anyone's sins. Keep yourself pure. This is the spirit of God talking to you today. Keep yourself pure if you want to see God. It is your duty to keep yourself pure. You see the such discussion coming, ungodly jokes coming, arguments coming, redraw yourself. Make an excuse to maintain yourself pure. Hallelujah. Don't be partaker of any man's sin. Be wise. Be like the five, the five virgin. Don't be like the, the, the five foolish one that forgot the extra oil. You always ask for the extra oil, extra oil, extra, extra grace, extra anointing, extra power to keep you pure. Be wise. Don't jump into conversation just like that. Before you open your mouth, before you join these people, you join them. Make sure, you make, make sure that what they're talking is, is not evil. Yes, keep yourself pure. Don't, don't allow anybody don't allow anybody to take you away from the presence of God. Don't partake in anyone's sin. Uh-huh. Why are you buying? Why are 
are you buying things? You, you are buying something. You know that that car, that man, the kind of business he's do, doing. You know that the man steals car. He, he steal and buy he, and sell. He steal and sell. And he sell it cheap. You know that. And you are keep on buying from him. Your hands are not clean. Your hands are not clean. Your heart is not pure. You will not see God. You will not see God. From now on, don't buy anything from somebody like that. Don't buy. Yes. Keep yourself pure. That sister that is a stormy blood for, for your heaven. Redraw yourself from her. I'm not telling you not to greet her again. Redraw yourself gently, wisely. Keep yourself pure. Don't be arguing with her. Don't be arguing with him. When he comes to offend you, keep yourself pure. Keep your hands pure. Keep your hands clean. Because I don't want you to serve God. Even. Why am I saying this, my sister? Because heaven is so precious. If you are not sanctified, all you are doing here, all the prayer we are doing here, go to meeting, prayer, everything, praying, everything, all these things are activities. Yes, they are activities. These things are the rewards that we are going to get there in heaven. First, you must enter the kingdom of God. Your foundation must be built on the rock. Make sure that all this activity you are doing, those mansions you are building for yourself in heaven, make sure that you will enter there. Make sure that you will enter there. Because if you are building, 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 you are putting money in the bank. You go and put, you give money to somebody to put in the bank. You don't even account. You don't have account. You don't have an ID. When, what is the proof? When you will go in the bank, say, give me money. You will say, where is the ID? You have been keeping money in somebody's account. That person will run away. What is the proof that is your money? You have been working for God. All this while, my sister. But your heart is not satisfied. You have not, you are not even going to enter. What's the point? I'm not telling you not to work for God again. You need to work for God. Because <coughs> he's the man that will do the work of God with, with negligence. No. Don't do the work of God with negligence. But don't work for God. Knowing that you are not going to enter dead. There in heaven. My sister, don't work in vain. Don't be a signboard. Direct people to heaven. When you, you know that you are not going anywhere. Keep yourself <laughs> pure. Now that you are a believer, you are not more the same person. You are not... That old man, you are a new creature. Take time to build a good relationship with your father. You are so much involved in church activity. But you are far from God. You are far from God. How many time are you spending time? My sister, that precious moment you are spending with Jesus. I, oh, my sister, is precious moments. Yes, that is, that is the foundation of your spiritual life. If your spiritual life is not built on the solid foundation, my sister, that's it. You will die. You will fall. You will fall. When storm come, make sure that you don't labor in vain. Make sure you spend time to talk with God alone. You spend you spend time to read your word, the word of God. Then you come together with other children of God to pray. Yes. Then all your activity that you are doing here, my sister, your reward you will not miss in heaven. Yes. Keep yourself pure. Keep your hand clean before God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you not to be a lukewarm Christian. I've been teaching you. Don't tell you not to get involved in the things of God. The things will go together. You work for God. Me, as a minister of God. If I just consecrate the ministry, and then I don't work on my own salvation, I don't work on my own life, that reward, I will not see it. I will only hear, oh, uh, mention for you, you ever know, there's some big, big city. If I'm not seeing it, I pray in the name of Jesus, I will touch it. I will enter into my mansion. I will enter. That city God is building for me because what God showed to me, show me city. He showed me city that is God to give to me. I must get there. I must get to that city. I must get there. Therefore, make sure, I must make sure that I am a sanctified believer. Build yourself. Build a good relationship with your father. Amen? We, that's why here, we gather here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. We gather only from 4 p.m. So you have the whole day. You have the whole day. If you pray one hour with the brethren, you have the whole day to take off your children, to take off of, of your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you to do all the, all, spend all the time prayer and you forget your children. I'm not telling you to take off the children alone and forget about prayer. You must have 
You, you must ask the help, the Holy Spirit, to give you a presentable and remarkable program. Make sure that you are balanced. Hallelujah. A balanced spiritual Christian. Your diet must be balanced. Yes. Don't focus on only one side. Oh, God has called me to evangelize. Only morning, evening, you go evangelize, evangelize. The plate are not washed in the house. Your children have not eat. Your husband is coming from work. You have not cooked for him. Oh, I need to pray, I need to pray, I need to pray, I need to pray. I need to pray, 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 pray. You are not balanced. You will miss that, 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 that reward. You must be a balanced Christian. You, you, you make sure that every, you have every attitude of a godly woman. You have every, you, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. God has take, called you to take off the children's Sunday school. But you, the whole week, you are busy doing all that thing. It's only that Sunday that you have that moment for God. Yes, you will have your reward in heaven. But first, enter first. Enter first to get that reward. And you will not enter because your heart is not there. You are just doing it for formality. You are just doing it because, oh, you are, you, you are working for God. Your, your, your relationship with God is not built. You are still living under the flesh. You are a married woman. You only concentrate on your marriage. Everything is my husband. Everything is my husband. My marriage. My marriage. You don't get involved in the things of God. The work of God comes in the last position. My sister, I am telling you that you are not a sanctified believer. Because your heart is not in the things of God. Make sure that you are a balanced Christian. Sanctified Christian. You, a woman that is married, you wake up early in the morning. Early in the morning. You make your program so that it will not interfere with the things of God. Hallelujah. You that is a God-fearing woman. I don't know your ministry. I don't know your calling. Maybe you are just there to do, like many the sisters that are working with me. They are working with me in the vineyard. But make sure that you are working with me in the vineyard. Make sure that you focus on your husband as well. Your husband must not see God and hate God. Your children must not see God and hate you, your God. Oh, our mother does not take care of us. Our, my, my husband does not, my, my wife does not take when your hus husband needs you. You are not there. You are not there. You are busy, but guilty. Busy, but get, busy for the work of God, for the work of God, but are, you are guilty. Ask for the Holy Spirit of God to allow you to do a remarkable, presentable timetable. When your husband comes, be satisfied. Your children are satisfied. God is satisfied. You are just waiting for heaven. My dear, this is it. I am telling you today that you need to be complete. 100% complete. If, like somebody like me, many people will come here. There's a brother that he came and said, oh, I'm coming to work. A young brother, very young. He said, I'm coming to work with you. That brother did not do one year. One month. The day he was leaving, I see that chasing him out. <laughs> My brother, he said, no, no, I have to go back. Uh, it's like they were chasing that name because in my house there is nothing that will make you it's just God morning evening God where I'm living even is in the village for you to see car you need to go far before you see car uh -huh. so my dear it's only about Jesus somebody must be broken before you come and stay with me until God will give me people that will help me but since God has not given me I will make sure that I take off my children as Sister Glory was preaching, I was cooking. I was in the kitchen cooking my food. When I finish, I'll go and eat with my children. Until God will give me people that will help me. When I'll be here preaching, yeah, I know that yeah, they're cooking. My children are well kept. Aha. Uh -huh. Until God see that you are working hard, your the ministry is tough. Now you will allow people to take good care of you. Your husband will not be complaining. God wants you to graduate. To another level of spirituality, another level of sanctification. You must be a sanctified Christian. Hallelujah. Say no to the flesh. This is almost the last part. Next week, we are going to take the last part. To be a sanctified Christian. I don't want you to miss heaven, my sister. Please don't miss heaven. Please. What you have heard today, make sure that you apply it in your life. Make sure that you kill that flesh. Make sure that your heart is pure before God. Before God and man. Make sure that your hands are clean before God and man. Make sure that you talk to God always. Keep your heart pure before Him. Make the Lord your best friend. Hallelujah. Make the Lord your best friend. 
This is the end of our message today. I told you last time that every week I have his name. The name of this week is the week of restitution. The week of restitution. Do the x-ray of your life. Restitute. If you have married a man that's not for, for you, go and restitute that man to your wife. Go and restitute that husband to the, 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 the wife. If you know that you have been working with fake paper, go and restitute that paper. A certificate that is not your own. Go and restitute. Go and give that book back to the owner. Go and give that back back to the owner. Go and give that clothes. You that have been stealing in shops. Go and give this thing back to the owner. This week is the week of the restitution. restitution. Number two, don't be partaker of anyone's sin this week. Before you jump into some people's sisters, are, I know we women always gossip. When you jump, keep quiet. Hear what they're saying. Make sure before you interrupt, you ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what must I say? This week, every virtuous woman must go through it. Don't be partaker of anyone's sin. Talk less. Talk Bible. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Don't forget to pay your tithe. The tithe of your time. Every day have 24 hours. Break it. Take the 10% of your time. That is 2 hours first 40 minutes. Break it in 15, 15 minutes. Break it. You can pray 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes. You know, before you see, you are spent. By the time you pray, with, you, you enjoy the presence of God. You spend one hour. Two hours, my sister. This is who I want you to be. A sanctified believer for the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you for this message. I pray you will not be a doer. But you will be, you will not be a, 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 a hearer, you will be a doer in the name of Jesus. God bless you.